Hi there, this is Yanis from Arcweave and this is a tutorial series on the Arcweave plugin for the Godot game engine. In this short series we'll learn how to get our story data from our Arcweave project into our Godot game. Moreover, we'll see how Arcweave's web API allows us to fetch story updates and refresh during runtime from within our exported game. In this first episode, we'll install and enable our plugin and explore its folder structure and important classes. The first thing we need to point out is that the Arcweave plugin requires we use the .NET version of Godot, also known as the Mono version, which allows scripting in C Sharp. The reason for this is that to parse ArcScript on runtime, our plugin uses Antler, which requires its scripts to be in C Sharp. If you are not familiar with the .NET version of Godot, there's no reason to be alarmed. Our example games are written in good old GDScript, and you can still write your game in GDScript. All you need to know is that the plugin itself is written in C Sharp, and therefore requires us to download and run the .NET version of Godot. So we need to go to Godot's website and do just that. So you go for godotengine.net. Uh, once you've installed the game engine, we can start a new project. Uh, the renderer is not important. This is going to be just for testing. Okay, so this is an empty Godot project. Let's now install the Arcweave plugin and explore it in a bit. Um, there are two ways we can do this. One is to go to the assets library and look for Arcweave. The other option is to go to uh, Arcweave's GitHub and search for Arcweave Godot plugin. There you go. You can find the link in this video's description, as well as on the Arcweave documentation page. So now we found it and we can download as zip. Extracting this zip file uh, gives us the uh, add-ons folder, which is the folder where all the Godot plugins are placed. And inside it, we can find the folder for the Arcweave plugin. So all this, we can simply um, drag and drop inside our Godot project. Let's get rid of this. So here we go, add-ons, Arcweave. The necessary steps to start using the plugin are thoroughly described in its GitHub repo right here. So let's just follow the instructions. Once we have our add-ons folder in place, we must now build our C Sharp solution file. So if we go to project tools, C Sharp, create C Sharp solution. This creates two new files in our root. We cannot see them here, but if we go to our um, our folders, here they are, tutorial arcweave.csproj and tutorial arcweave, the SLN file. We must now open our CS proj files with an editor and add some lines of code 
that will include the antler library so our plugin can parse ArcScript on the fly again this is all um, described on the github uh, readme on the uh, repo on the uh, <laughs> this is all described in the arcweave godot plugin readme on uh, its repository so here we go open the CS proj file and after the property group part add the following line so let's copy this line or just close just click here duh and then we go to this part here after the property group closing tag we just paste the item group and we save Now we need to build and then, and just in case, reload our current project. Now, if, if we go to Project Settings, Plugins, we can enable the Arcweave plugin. And that's it. We can now explore the plugin a little bit. Let's see how it works uh, in a nutshell. So first of all, from the C-sharp classes included in the, uh, in the plugin, the one we'll be directly accessing all the time is the Story class. So the story class is responsible for following the story flow. It keeps track of what the current element is, of the number of visits of every element, as well as the uh, um, any variable assignments taking place in the current element. Some useful methods of the story class. Uh, here's its script, story CS. So uh, one of the useful methods is uh, get current element, which returns the current element as a Godot object. Then we have uh, generate current options, which returns the current elements valid options. That is the options that we, the player, can actually see in Arcweave's play mode at the given game state. And Another one, another useful method is get current runtime content, which returns the current element's content as a string after evaluating any potential arc script code it may contain. I advise you to thoroughly study uh, the demo games that come with the plugin to see in practice how the story class is used. Now the Arcweave plugin has one fundamental object called Arcweave Asset. This is actually a resource, so we can create one by going, since we've enabled the plugin, we can create a resource folder, resources, and inside that folder we can create a new resource and look for Arcweave, there you go, if we just search for it, Arcweave Asset. And we can call this um, story, story T-Res. And here it is. Now let's open this. But okay, here, here is our Arcweave asset, but what does it do? Well, this is the resource that stores our Arcweave data, everything about our Arcweave project. Now in the inspector, of our Arcweave asset, we can first of all see it has a receive method, and this can either be file or web API. So these are the two methods we can use to transfer data from Arcweave uh, into the Godot engine. One is using a JSON file, and the other one is using the web API if we have a team account. And then we have the file settings. If we use the file method, we can um, add the path here to find the JSON file or the API settings. We need to have an API token and a project hash. 
And of course, there is a button that initializes the Arcweave asset. Of course, now we're gonna get an error. We don't have a file in this path and we don't have, uh, yeah, we don't have a hash. So we get nothing in return. To test how uh, this resource works, we can export our castle project as a JSON file and fetch it into the Arcweave asset. So let's open the castle. And if we go to export, we need to go to the engine tab and export for Godot 4. So the castle zip, if I uh, extract that, it says project five um, JSON. I can just drag this into Godot 4 just to find it easy. I don't have to drag it uh, to any specific folder. It certainly doesn't have to be included in the project folder because when we access it from this path here, so uh, if I go to my Godot for folder, uh, what was the name? Project 5. Sorry, I have to look for it here. Project 5, there you go. So when I access it from this folder, um, I c once I initialize and all the data comes in and into the Arcweave asset, I don't really need the JSON file anymore. So now we set this to file. Uh, we have our path so we can initialize the Arcweave asset and it says successfully refreshed from file. Now we can see that the project is um, actually a dictionary of 14, size 14, which means, let's click this, and it contains uh, everything our JSON file contains, that is all the items of our Arcweave project, all the boards, notes, elements, jumpers, connections, branches, etc. The cover of the project, the name of the project, and the starting element. And we can access any of these here as well. So we can, we want to see an element, we open this dictionary. Every element here is, again, it's a dictionary. So the key is the element ID. Let me drag this a little more here. The element ID and the value is another dictionary which contains, um, for example, the color of the element, the title of the element, the content, etc., etc. So how can we use this now? There are actually two ways we can introduce the Arcweave asset to our game. The first one is to preload it in the beginning of our game script, as we often do with resources in Godot. Uh, this means that we also have to um, access our story class. If you're interested how this is done, if we go to our um, GitHub repo, just go to create your own node. And then there is an example script here that does not use the second solution, which is an Arcweave node. So if you're interested in that, just click here. You'll find um, an example that can answer all your questions. But we actually now are going to go for the second solution, a simpler way to introduce our Arcweave asset to our game, and that is by using an Arcweave node. So at the moment, we don't have a scene tree, so let's create one. It can be anything, really. We're just making a quick example. So I'm just making a control, saving it as main, main TSCN. Of course, you can not in resources. I can just create a scenes folder and save my main. Then we add a child to our scene, to our root. If we go to all the nodes and type Arcweave, here it is. It's called Arcweave node. The Arcweave node has a C-sharp script that takes care of initializing the story object and handling story updates. 
Now remember that uh, the Arcweave plugin allows story updates and data fetching during game runtime, and the Arcweave node handles any requests we make to Arcweave's web API. If we double click to this Arcweave node, in the inspector we see that it is actually waiting uh, for an Arcweave asset. Well, we're in luck because we've already created that. It's our story T res, so I can just drag it and drop it in here. And if I click it, we can see uh, the Arcweave assets properties here as well. That was it for this first episode. In the next one, we'll see how the plugin works by opening our first game example, a simplistic implementation of Arcweave's play mode in Godot. If you find these tutorials helpful, please subscribe to Arcweave's official YouTube channel. You can find us, the Arcweave team, hanging out on our Discord server, and of course, you can follow Arcweave on Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm Yanis from Arcweave, thank you for watching, and let the games begin. Mm.